My eldest son's wife, Lulu, smirked as she said, I bet you can play wonderfully. She probably intended to embarrass me at this family gathering. Lulu, with her only pride being her elite conservatory background, is desperate to claim the grand piano in my house. I, too, have reached the end of my patience. My name is Meyer Brown, and I just turned 60 this year. My husband has already passed away, and my three sons each have families of their own. I currently live alone in a mansion that is far too large for one person. Fortunately, my eldest son and his wife live nearby. It's comforting to know that my eldest son, Scott, wants me to consult with him if I have any problems. Perhaps it would be best to sell this mansion and move into an apartment or condominium more suitable for one person. But there's a reason I can't move. It's the grand piano that my late husband gifted me. As long as this piano is here, I don't think I'll ever leave this mansion. This grand piano is causing a lot of friction. Lulu is the one causing the problem. She's the kind of woman who flaunts her elite music university education, and I found her difficult to deal with since we first met. However, I didn't impose my opinion as she's the woman my son chose. Scott and Lulu got married hastily due to her pregnancy. But after the wedding, it turned out she was mistaken about being pregnant. I was dumbfounded, but my kind-hearted son, saying things like everyone makes mistakes, comforted her. Men don't understand the ulterior motives that women can have. I think Lulu really wanted to marry Scott. I don't mean to boast as a mother, but Scott is tall, high-earning, and handsome. He's also very gentle and kind. I just can't bring myself to like her when I think she took advantage of Scott's kindness. It seems Lulu finds me difficult to deal with as well. She tries to act respectful to me as a mother-in-law, but I can see through her belittling me at heart. It probably comes from the fact that I play the piano as a hobby. I've never played the piano in front of her. She's challenged me several times by saying things like, I would love to hear you play, but I've always turned her down. I play the piano in memory of my late husband. That's how it's always been and will continue to be. I didn't want to explain this to her over and over. How could she laugh in such a sneering, mocking way and still sit in front of the piano? I'm truly fed up with being told this every time we meet. Last week, Lulu gave me a hard time again. It is comforting that we live close to each other, but it's a bit problematic because we share the same neighbors. Lulu loves gossip and has a habit of spreading baseless rumors. When she and Scott just got married, she told the neighbors that I was strongly against the marriage and that she had a miscarriage due to the stress, which was a complete fabrication. She was never pregnant in the first place, and a miscarriage was impossible. She was trying to portray herself as a tragic heroine by making me out to be the villain. Lulu, aren't you spreading lies about me to the neighbors? Even though they were newly married, I found it impossible to turn a blind eye to this. I confronted her. Lulu looked a tad guilty but eventually seemed to brazen it out with her typical smirk playing around her lips. Mother-in-law, this is so unfair. I don't know where you heard such rumors, but it's unfair to trust the words of others more than you trust me. Am I not a part of the family yet? The slick-tongued Lulu started to approach me, making it look as if I was at fault, even resorting to welling up her eyes with tears. I was stunned at her audacity the nerve of her lying and evading the issue with such shameless boldness. My son, Scott, also came to know about this and gently chastised me, much to my chagrin. But considering this was happening so soon after their wedding, I eventually decided to let it slide and leave it unresolved. With a mother-in-law versus daughter-in-law dispute, I was always at a disadvantage. Rather than having another baseless rumor spread, I decided to endure this one. Then recently, a similar situation occurred. One morning, the neighborhood ladies who were chatting in front of the house quickly changed their expressions as soon as they saw me. From their reactions, I had a hunch that something had happened. It was the exact same response as before. Good morning, I greeted them, and they dispersed like startled spiders. I felt that another strange rumor was being circulated. As soon as I returned home, I reached out to the neighbor I was most friendly with. I'm sorry for calling so early in the morning. While explaining the incident, I asked my friend if another strange rumor about me was being spread. She hesitated but then informed me about the rumor, that I was responsible for shortening my husband's life. The baseless gossip detailed that I had a penchant for extravagance and that my husband had to continue working even after his retirement, leading to his death from overwork. But my husband had already passed away by the time Lulu became my daughter-in-law. She shouldn't have any basis to speak about him. 
Upon hearing my explanation, my friend agreed with me. She promised to help clear up the misunderstanding with the neighbors, giving me some relief. I felt that the spread of the rumor would be prevented. However, once I was relieved, my anger toward Lulu started bubbling up again. After her marriage, Lulu quit her job to become a full-time housewife. She seemed bored during the day, so she'd often gather the young neighborhood wives and engage in gossip. She probably used some made-up rumor about me as fodder for their daily chit-chat. The fact that she used my dear late husband for entertainment was unbearable. I finished breakfast and decided to pay a visit to my eldest son's home. I arrived at Scott's house around 9.30 am Scott had already left for work. When I called out from the front door, Lulu, with her hair all disheveled, appeared from the bedroom. What, Lulu? You just woke up. I was taken aback and raised my voice unintentionally. May my mother-in-law, it's quite inconvenient if you come over without informing me beforehand. What's the matter so early in the morning? Lulu, just woken up and seemingly grumpy, muttered her complaints. The living room was a mess, clearly not well cleaned. Even though I live close by, I try not to interfere with my son and daughter-in-law's life and rarely visit their home. However, the current situation is unbearable. I'm sorry I didn't get in touch. It was an emergency situation. I apologize. After offering an apology for not getting in touch, I got down to the matter at hand. Couldn't you have resolved it over the phone? Why bother coming all the way here? She seemed profoundly bothered by my visit. She sat deep into the couch in her pajamas, crossing her legs. It almost felt like she was looking down on me. Standing in front of Lulu, I suppressed the anger swelling up inside of me. I cautiously asked her about the rumor without raising my voice. Then she snorted. Oh that. Hello. Could you please explain what you mean? I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't spread strange rumors. Huh. But it's the truth, isn't it? Lulu grinned again, stating her point. On what basis are you claiming such a thing? I lost my cool due to her attitude, and my tongue got harsher, yet she remained unperturbed. The grand piano is the proof. You pestered your husband to get it for you, didn't you? I've never seen you playing it. Hello. Lulu insinuated that I had whimsically made my husband buy a grand piano that I didn't even play. She understood the value of that piano. Of course, being a music college graduate, she would. Don't you think it's a sheer waste to beg for a piano that you can't even play? I'm starting to feel sorry for my father-in-law. Oh, lol. Lulu completely mocked me. I was at a loss for words due to her audacity. Seeing me silent, she laughed. Can't rebut because it's true. I found it impossible to discuss my precious memories of my husband with this woman. It felt as if our cherished memories would be tarnished, so I could do nothing but stay silent. Going silent when the going gets tough, I stood up from the sofa and said to Lulu, sorry for disturbing you. She laughed in a victorious manner. As I exited the living room, her high-pitched laughter pierced my back. I felt frustrated and tearful when I got home. Since that rumor incident, I've been keeping a distance from my eldest son and his wife. Honestly, I don't want to see Lulu ever again. I do feel sorry for my son Scott. However, thinking about my son being stuck in the middle of this mother-in-law and daughter-in-law issue and struggling, I believe that the best solution is for me not to approach Lulu. Regardless of how much you try to avoid, there are times when avoidance isn't possible. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Day are such times. On top of that, this year I will be turning 60. Scott called to celebrate my milestone birthday. My other sons and their wives, living out of state in places like Texas and Minnesota, seem to be coming home as well. They are planning to gather all the relatives, including my husband's sister, to celebrate my 60th birthday. I am truly happy to see my out-of-state children, their spouses, and my grandchildren after such a long time. I have no choice but to turn a blind eye to Lulu just for this day. I kept telling myself that. From the day before the birthday celebration, the grandchildren living out of state started returning home one after another, making the house bustling with activity. Usually being alone, the sudden increase in people almost made my head spin. The grandkids were all lively, running around the mansion. Among them, one girl, the daughter of my second son, quietly gazed at my piano. Do you like the piano? I asked. My granddaughter nodded. I remembered being consulted by my daughter-in-law about her being shy and reserved. Apparently, she was having trouble making friends even in kindergarten, which was a cause for concern. Do you want to try playing? At my words, my granddaughter's face lit up brightly. 
As I opened the lid of the piano, she reached out hesitantly. When I sat her on the chair, she asked in a tiny voice, Can I play it? Of course, go ahead. My granddaughter pressed a key with her small finger, and a beautiful sound echoed. The spreading sound seemed to surprise her, and she repeated pressing the keys many times, closing her eyes to feel the spread and echo of the sound. Looking at her side profile, I thought I wouldn't mind leaving the piano to this girl. Hearing the sound of the piano, my daughter-in-law appeared, saying, Sorry, mother-in-law. Seeing her own mother suddenly appear, my granddaughter seemed surprised, returning from her world of sound. It seems like she likes the piano. Is she taking piano lessons? I asked my daughter-in-law. She replied that they hadn't started her on piano lessons yet as they couldn't afford it. Indeed, my second son's family had many kids. They were raising five children. It must be true that they are financially strained. I see. You should rely on me more. Don't hesitate. My daughter-in-law nodded happily at my words and bowed her head, saying thank you. I wished Lulu was a bit like her. I was wondering who was playing, Lulu said loudly as she entered the room without hesitation. She glanced at my granddaughter sitting at the piano and scolded. It's not a toy. It's not a piano for a child to touch. You don't know its value and you can't play it. You audacious child. Lulu attempted to push my granddaughter away from the piano. My granddaughter, thinking she was being scolded, got off the chair with a scared look and hid behind my daughter-in-law. This piano is not for anyone but music alights like me to touch. It's not a toy for children and certainly not for the elderly either. Her last statement was likely a sarcastic remark aimed at me. My daughter-in-law quietly bowed to Lulu and took my granddaughter to the yard. Lulu, who had been watching them leave with her arms crossed, tried to sit on the now empty chair in front of the piano. I hastily closed the lid of the piano. I really didn't want her touching my precious piano. It was a spur-of-the-moment reaction and Lulu glared at me. This piano holds precious memories of my husband. I don't want someone who would push a child aside to play it to touch it. I'm sorry. Facing Lulu's glare, I smiled sweetly. She clicked her tongue. She must have felt my strong will to not let her play. Let me be frank since it's a good opportunity. This piano is wasted on you, mother-in-law. Don't you think it'd be more fitting for someone like me? I'd be happy to take it off your hands. Her eyes did not reflect the joviality of her words. It was clear that Lulu was serious. The next night, a party was held to celebrate my 60th birthday with all the relatives gathering. It had been a long time since everyone had come back home. Apart from my eldest son and his wife, my children and their spouses were at the forefront organizing a grand celebration for my milestone birthday. It was a bit embarrassing to put on the red cardigan they gifted me, but being celebrated by everyone was much more pleasant than I had anticipated. The celebration was made even more lively with a musical gift from my grandchildren. As everyone clapped at the end of the grandchildren's performance, Lulu suddenly chimed in. That's right, let's have the mother-in-law play the piano. Her suggestion seemed spur of the moment, but I could tell she had been waiting for this opportunity to embarrass me. At Lulu's words, my sons joined in. We've never heard you play. I had only played the piano when it was just my husband and me. My children had never heard me perform. With such a marvelous piano in your possession, mother-in-law, you must be quite the player, Lulu said with her signature smirk. I would only be a displeasure to your ears, and it'd be embarrassing to perform during such a celebration. I tried to escape the situation with a harmless brush off, but Lulu kept pressing on. Oh, so you've got such an expensive piano but can't play. That would mean you're quite the spendthrift. Guess the rumors were true, huh? At her continual taunts, even my eldest son, normally quite reserved, raised his voice, Hey now. But Lulu was not one to be quieted by such words. Scott looked at me with a troubled expression. I suppose it can't be helped. I'll make an exception today. Unable to bear seeing my son's troubled face, I started walking towards the piano. A quick patter of small footsteps followed and my granddaughter, who loved the piano, clung to my side. She was clearly looking forward to hearing me play, her cheeks slightly flushed with anticipation. I wonder what kind of performance it will be. Three blind mice at best, I assume, Lulu sneered. As I opened the piano lid and took my seat, her attitude caused the daughters-in-law to furrow their brows. Lulu was not particularly liked among them. She always took full advantage of her status as the wife of the eldest son, often looking down on the others. The piano keys, 
which I hadn't touched in a while, felt cold and comforting. Since I had it tuned regularly, the piano was always ready to be played. After warming up my wrists, I let my fingers dance across the keys. The first piece I chose was Chopin's Ballydno, forward in F minor, op. 52. From its serene beginning to the technically demanding parts, it is a challenging piece. Lulu appeared to recognize the piece as soon as I started playing and froze with a shocked expression on her face. Playing the piano after a long time somehow made all the unpleasant things feel irrelevant. I played several technically challenging pieces my husband loved and ended with a jazz arrangement of a popular cartoon theme song that my children loved. The moment all the performances were over, my entire family cheered and applauded me. My little granddaughter wrapped her arms around my knee excitedly exclaiming, Awesome! Awesome! The only one who seemed discontent among the relatives was Lulu. I flashed her a warm smile. So it was true that mom was a pianist. I thought dad was joking. My eldest son Scott commented with a hint of excitement in his voice. I had made sure that my children, especially Scott, would never discover that I was a pianist. After graduating from the Vienna Conservatory, I had started my journey as a pianist. That's when I met my husband and gave birth to Scott. When my mother-in-law forced me to choose between the piano and my husband, I chose my husband and Scott after much anguish. To ensure that Scott wouldn't feel burdened by this, my husband, and I hid this truth. After I declared I would never touch the piano again, my husband bought this piano for me, asking that I play only for him. I later found out that my mother-in-law also played a role in purchasing the piano. It seemed they bought this piano, replacing the dream they had taken away from me. To me, this piano was a precious item that affirmed the bond with my husband and the love from my mother-in-law. I had no intention of handing it over to someone who merely desired its monetary value. By the way, I don't think I've ever heard Lulu play. Mom, would it be okay if Lulu played a piece? Scott asked me. What? Isn't Lulu a graduate from a top music school? You've never heard her play. I was somewhat surprised by Scott's words. Then I remembered. There's no piano at Scott and Lulu's house. That did seem unusual. Lulu, would you mind playing something? I'd love to hear it too. I stood up from the chair in front of the piano, intending to let Lulu take my place, but Lulu didn't sit down. Just the other day, she was leaning back comfortably in this chair, and now she seemed to recoil in fear. She was pale. I'm not feeling well today, she excused herself, trying to escape the situation. Not feeling well. After all that food and drink, or is there another reason you can't play the piano? I couldn't believe it and decided to confront her. Lulu mumbled some excuses. You wouldn't lie about graduating from a top music school, would you? Lulu flinched at my words. What? Was I right? Have you been lying about everything except the pregnancy? I unintentionally raised my voice. Lulu's face turned pale. She looked like she was about to faint. You're not telling me you lied about graduating from a top music school. Scott also questioned Lulu, seemingly surprised. Lulu fell silent as if she had forgotten how to speak. Our youngest three-year-old grandchild toddled over, pulling out the leaflet from Lulu's back pocket. She handed it to me innocently, saying, Here. Maybe she was trying to diffuse the tension in her own small way. I smiled at her, saying thank you and took the leaflet, only to be shocked. The leaflet was advertising a high-priced used piano purchase service. The likely phone confirmed purchase price was scribbled on the leaflet in ballpoint pen. Lulu, you, you were planning to sell my piano? I couldn't hold it back anymore. I yelled at Lulu and showed the leaflet to the relatives. The whole family peered at the leaflet, staring at Lulu in disbelief. She seemed unable to bear their gaze and ran home as if escaping. The person who suffered the most from this commotion was my eldest son, Scott. The wife he had always believed in had been proven to be a big liar. We couldn't find the right words to comfort Scott. Afterwards, Scott and Lulu divorced. It seemed that Scott had reached his limit with Lulu's incessant lies. Moreover, Lulu had a habit of spending extravagantly and was secretly in deep debt. She apparently planned to repay the debt with the money from selling my piano. Once Scott found out about Lulu's debt repayment plan, he immediately filed for divorce. Lulu, who had lived a married life full of lies, was now jobless and supposedly hiding out at her parents' home. I hear debt collectors are visiting her parents' house daily. I decided to open a small piano school afterwards. Some neighborhood kids are attending. 
The piano seems to emit a joyous sound when played by the children. Apparently, my granddaughter has also started taking piano lessons. After hearing me play, the wife of the second son was so moved that she decided to have her child learn the piano. I'm subsidizing the monthly piano lessons. The once quiet mansion is now filled with the voices of children, becoming quite lively. I believe my husband would be delighted.